Hello everybody, my name is Lush Eisner and welcome to the Canadian Money Talk, a channel about Canadian investing in personal finance. Please like and subscribe. I record two videos per week, so make sure you ring the notification bell to get notified each time one comes out. This is my thoughts on market happenings for the week ending June 23, 2023. Looking at the market indexes for the week, the TSX, S&P 500, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, and Russell 2000 were all down. Gold was also down, as was oil, to around 69.50 per barrel for the week. The markets have been under a bit of pressure since the press conference and news release of the Fed previously stating that they are not going to increase interest rates at this time, but are likely to increase rates one to two times later this year. The Powell testimony in Washington this week had not made things better. Also, FedEx, a bellwether for the U.S. economy, also missed sales and profit estimates. U.S. stocks experienced the worst week since March. Looking at Canada, the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, or OSFI, the Canadian banking regulator, is asking Canadian banks to increase their domestic stability buffer, a safety net, to 3.5% from 3% of risk-weighted assets due to the higher interest rates and the impact these have on mortgages, and the higher risk of something going wrong, such as loans going sour. Amortizations are being increased for some people with variable rate mortgages who cannot pay more than they are already on a monthly basis, since their principal owed would increase otherwise, i.e. their payments don't cover the interest charge currently. Increasing the amortization past 30 years will alleviate this, and the hope is that the interest rates will come down in the meantime. The higher domestic stability buffer, or a uh, part of capitalization, is likely to mean lower dividend increases for the banks, more restrictions on lending, and share buybacks. Policymakers at the Bank of Canada discussed uh, holding off on another rate hike until July during their deliberations earlier this month, prior to the last quarter percent rate hike, according to the newly released minutes of the talks. But officials eventually decided that hot economic data, including higher than expected consumer spending and rising inflation, required the bank to end its four-month pause on rate increases. The central bank raised its key rate by 25 basis points on June 7th to four and three quarter percent, a 22 year high. The bank has not said if it will raise rates again in July, but many forecasters expect another increase. Canada has a significant inflow of immigrants, with the Liberal government wanting to add a half a million of new permanent residents each year. Our population would double in 26 years at that current population growth rate. A small subset of immigrants are millionaires. Interesting data is available about the countries losing the most high net worth individuals and the countries gaining the most high net worth individuals. The consulting firm Henley and Partners report puts Canada in sixth place for attracting millionaires in the entire world with a net inflow of 1,200 millionaires for last year and a forecast at 1,600 for 2023. Australia, United Arab Emirates, Singapore, and the U.S. are the top four attractors for millionaires. These folks are looking for political stability and a good lifestyle. The top five countries losing millionaires are China, expected to lose uh, 13,500 during 2023, India, UK, Russia, and Brazil, generally because of some social, economic, or political instability. Canada has good health care and education as well. 110,000 millionaires moved somewhere in total last year. Inflows of immigrants help the housing market, of course. Turning to the United States, uh, data last Friday showed that the University of Michigan's gauge of U.S. consumer sentiment rose to a four-month high of uh, 63.9 points in June, stronger than expectations of uh, 60 points. Sentiment is improving, albeit at still depressed levels. In his testimony before the U.S. House of Financial Services Committee on Wednesday, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said policymakers anticipate interest rates would need to be raised to moderate 
U.S. economic growth and contain inflationary pressures. Quote, inflation pressures continue to run high and the process of getting inflation back down to 2% has a long way to go, end quote, the central bank leader told U.S. lawmakers on Wednesday. In addition, Mr. Powell said it might, uh, quote, make sense, end quote, for the Fed to raise rates at a, quote, more moderate pace, end quote, than it has in the past 15 months. The markets did not like the bearish approach and sold off Wednesday and Thursday pretty much worldwide. On Thursday, Powell reiterated his message that additional rate hikes are likely in the months ahead, emphasizing that the central bank's primary objective is to bring down inflation. The U.S. Labor Department's report on Thursday showed claims for state unemployment benefits were unchanged at a 20-month high of 264,000 last week, higher than the expected figure of 260,000, pointing to a slight cooling in the labor market. This is relatively good news, hopefully contributing to a lower number of interest rate hikes in the U.S. Now for some bits and pieces. This week, the Bank of England raised interest rates by 50 basis points Thursday following Wednesday's red-hot UK inflation data, while central banks of Switzerland and Norway also hiked rates. Alibaba, the Chinese e-commerce and tech giant, shook up its leadership structure as it embarks on a sweeping corporate restructuring into six business units. The company said Daniel Zhang will step down from his CEO role and focus more on Alibaba's cloud operations. Eddie Wu will take Zhang's spot as CEO. Concerns over China's slowing economic growth outweighed an interest rate cut by the central bank. The People's Bank of China trimmed two key benchmark lending rates for the first time in 10 months Tuesday to shore up a slowing economic recovery, with its one-year loan prime rate, which serves as a benchmark for corporate loans, lowered by 10 basis points to 3.55%, and the five-year LPR, which is used to price mortgages, reduced by the same margin to 4.2%. China also has a debt problem, and people just aren't spending. The government will be looking at a stimulus package to get people and companies to borrow and spend. You'll note that uh, the Bank of China is cutting rates, while most of the rest of the world is increasing their rates. So China is in a different part of its business cycle. Hyundai is considering whether to join Ford and General Motors in using Tesla's charging technology in North America. Elon Musk's EV giant dominates the market for fast charging stations in the U.S., uh, increased adoption of the tech known as the North American Charging Standard should be a boost to legacy automakers trying to catch up to Tesla, while Tesla should reap profits as well. For Hyundai, it will be a matter of whether Tesla can adapt to the South Korean automakers' higher voltage charging demands. Quote, that's what we will look into from the customer's perspective, end quote. Hyundai CEO Jaehoon Chang said. Speaking of Tesla's charging stations, Texas will be the first U.S. state to mandate Tesla's electric vehicle charging system. In a huge win for CEO Elon Musk, who is working towards making the connector the industry standard. Experts believe the decision could push other states to adopt the system. In addition, Tesla is poised to benefit from China's 72 billion tax breaks for EVs, while Musk hinted at launching Tesla in another major Asian market. Investing group leader JR Research believes Tesla's NACS plug is well-primed to assume leadership as the national standard. This automaker also just became the latest to add the connector to its EVs, following Ford and General Motors. And finally, looking at next week, we have a few more companies reporting. On Monday, we have Carnival Cruises. Tuesday is Walgreens. Wednesday, Micron and Blackberry. Thursday is Nike. And Friday is Constellation Brands. Economic events next week. On Tuesday, we have the very important Canadian CPI read to see our inflation numbers. On Wednesday is U.S. crude oil inventories, which will drive oil prices. Thursday is the U.S. GDP for Q1 to see if they are nearing a recession. 
and Friday is the Canadian equivalent GDP for April and also the Canadian Business Outlook Survey. If you have any requests on what you'd like me to cover in future videos, please put that in the comment section. If you'd like to get in touch, please reach out on any of the social media channels and may you have a profitable day.